Our second Bible reading for today is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. And these words will serve as a basis of this morning's sermon. We hear. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. We have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. In this, love is made complete with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, as he is so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear, because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand for that. The portion of God's word that we're focusing on here this morning is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. That's good meditation on this word. Let's pray. Lord, we get a chance to hear again of how you loved us from that love. May we share it to others and love as you have loved us. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I don't know how many of you know this, but if I told you the time I met my wife, it was uh, back in 2004. It was her freshman year of college. She just did the math. I did the math. I know it's right. It was January 2004. Chapel had just gotten out, and so the halls of our school, Martin Luther College in New Orleans, Minnesota, was flooded with people as we're all headed off to our fourth hour class. And generally speaking, with the flow of crowds, you just anticipate the person in front of you to continue walking until they stop suddenly in their tracks and, you know, you happen to run into them. And it's okay, she didn't drop her books or anything, but I asked her, are you okay? And she paused for a second and said, no, I'm lost. I'm thinking, oh, okay, she doesn't know where she's going. I'm a junior. I know this school pretty well. Where do you need to go? You need to go to the biology lab. Oh, yeah, that is weirdly numbered. Walked her over to it, dropped her off her classroom. Don't know that I said anything else, but just hoped I'd get to see her again. And so here we are, almost 17 years later, happily married for almost 16 years. And that was the story of how we met. Start of our love story. I tell you that because I know in some way, shape, or form, all of us have a love story that we can share. Now, it might be some kind of cute meet like the one I had with my, my wife. It might have been a blind date that you were set up on. It might have been an introduction from a friend. It might have been a random encounter in a bar. It might have been an online dating site. But somehow, some way, shape, and form, you probably came in touch with somebody that maybe you love. But there is one love story that is universal. It's actually our first love, because they loved us, he loved us, before we ever existed. Of course, you can probably figure out where we're going with that. It's our love story from God. 
To think when he created the heavens and the earth, when he created everything in this majesty, he was thinking of you. That he wanted to make this for you. And that after Adam and Eve took that perfect world and then sin chose to disobey him and ruined it, God immediately announced, well, my love doesn't stop just here with creating you a perfect world. My love is going to extend even farther, and I'm going to solve this problem of sin, this problem of imperfection that has come into this world. And we know that that love story culminated in him giving of himself, coming down from heaven, taking on human flesh, living for us every single day of his 33 years on this earth, living perfectly under that law 24-7, so that when that day came and he went to the cross, he as a perfect man could then take upon himself all of our sins, all of our imperfections, and there take the entire punishment that we deserve. By doing so, Jesus became our full atoning sacrifice to know that there is no debt owed to him whatsoever. Our debt of sin is completely wiped out. It is gone. That's God's love story for us. God's love was revealed among us in this way, John wrote. God sent his one and only son of the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. For me, for you, God is our first love. First love because he loved us first. Now, I don't know when you first encountered God. I can put a very specific date out there as to when I know God very personally loved me. It was May 1st, 1983, because that was the day that a pastor with simple water and the word of God said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and dousing me with a little bit of water. On that day, God said, your sins are gone. My love for you and my son, you now know it personally. You have received it. You have been brought into fellowship with me. You are a part of my family. I know that's the day that I personally knew God's love. You might have a day, you might not. It might have been a day, like mine, where you were baptized as just an infant. It might have been a day that someone else introduced you later on in life. Maybe it was even the love of your life who introduced you to God. Maybe it was a random stranger. Somebody who just invited you to come to a building and hear about a love story that involved you. Maybe it was online. Maybe it was as you were searching and you were seeking and you were trying to find answers to your questions and yet you heard about this God, this one who has loved you even before you existed, even before you were seeking him. But somehow or another, you have come to know God's love story for you. Now with this love story, we know that it changes us. It changes us because we are loved first. Love first like a parent loves a child. When, when you think about it, if you've had kids, you didn't say, okay, well, this child will love me in the future, or this child will make me proud later on in life, or this child has promised to me, and we have a written agreement and a contract, that they're going to work really hard and take care of me in my old age. That's not why any parent loves their child. No, they just choose to love their child. They choose to care for them. They choose to feed them and clothe them and bathe them and cuddle them. And most often it's just because of that simple reason. God loved us first. Before we could do anything in return, before we could ever say, we'll make you proud, God, or we'll dedicate our lives to you, God, or we'll give you a tenth of all we have, God. No, God loved us first. And it causes a response. We have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. So being loved first by God, we share that first love. Now some of you, some of you, this might have been the very first time I ever told you a story about how I met my wife. There's a few reasons for that. 
one, and I was very self-conscious about this, I did ask her permission to share that story, by the way. But if I tell you this story, what if it bores you? What if you just kind of think, oh, that's, that's kind of ridiculous? What if you make fun of it? What if it makes you feel bad because you don't have a meat cute story like that? And so there are reasons I don't just like tell this to anybody and everybody I meet every single day all the time. I have some fears about sharing that love story. And is that any different than sharing the love story of our first love? You know that there are things that make you afraid to talk about God. One of them might just simply be, I don't know enough. I don't know enough Bible passages. I, I, I don't know all the answers to these questions. And you don't. I don't. I don't have the Bible 100% memorized. And I have a faulty memory even if all the Bible passages I do have up there. Or maybe you think, what if they're going to make fun of me? Are they going to think I'm some kind of holier-than-thou person, some kind of Bible thumper if I talk about God with them? And yes, John has written earlier, do not be surprised if the world hates you. What if they look at my life and I talk about how much I love God and how much it's changed me, and they look at me and they say, but you're a hypocrite. And again, that's a very real thing, especially with one of the things that John said in this section. And if anyone says, I love God and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. What if they call me out on that? And so we're afraid to share this love story. So how do we deal with these fears about sharing our first love if, since God loved us first? Well, first of all, let's understand... The first one, I don't know enough. Is that true? Or do you know enough? Do you know just very simply that I have a God who created me, who saw my state and the way I'm at, and I could not save myself, so he saved me. He took away all my sins. Is that not enough of the love story? And if somebody comes back and asks you more questions, and maybe you know some of the answers, maybe you don't, but yet this actually then becomes an opportunity because you can then, like we talked about last week, love the Word of God. That you can dive into it, you can do what I end up having to do, you can Google those Bible passages and try to figure out where does God say these things, where does God show me this love, and you can dive in further, you can grow in your faith, you can love God even more, and then it becomes an immediate opportunity for you to come back to that person and to say, let me tell you more, let me tell you more about what I've read, about what I've seen, because I do know my God. Maybe we think about the fact that people are going to make fun of me. It's true. Some will. Some will think you're ignorant. Some will think you're simple. Some will think you're uneducated. Because you believe in this all-powerful God we can't see, and yet he makes everything better and promises you something you can't see. It's going to happen. But if you look at these people in your life, and you wonder what they might respond and you don't actually know, if you're not bold enough to share with them how God loved you first, who will? Who will anyone? Or if we think, they're going to call me out. They're going to look at my life and they're going to see how I do not love my brother or sister the way that I say I should. And they're going to say, you're a hypocrite. Well, then own it. <coughs> Confess it. And say, yeah, I have not loved in word and action. I have often failed to love the way that my God has loved me. And for that, I repent. For that, I confess. And you know what our God says when we confess our sins? It's what John wrote to us earlier in the first chapter. When we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
We have these fears. But what our God says, and what our God doesn't take away from us, is the fact that he loved us first. He is still the atoning sacrifice for all our sins. He truly still has paid for every single time that we have withheld sharing our first love to somebody else because we were afraid to do it. And what's more is because Christ is our atoning sacrifice, because his love is made complete as we actually live it out, he reminds us of where we stand with him. I brought you into fellowship with me. I've taken away your sins. I've reconciled you. You are made holy. You belong with me. You belong with God. And so this means we know a certainty of where we stand. That starts to drive out that fear. Because people can do all sorts of things to you. They can ignore you. They can cast you aside. They can make fun of you. But at the end of the day, they're not your God. And they were not the ones who loved you first. No, instead, as John wrote, there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear. Because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is made complete in us. We love and we share this first love because God loved us first. That's a great story to share. So knowing where you stand with God, knowing that you still have that first love, knowing that God is still your atoning sacrifice for your sins, knowing that he has cleansed you from all sin, purified you from all unrighteousness, we got an awesome story to tell. And we're going to do it in different ways. One of the ways that we have to do it, one of the ways that we already addressed being hypocrites, that we're going to have to love not just with our words, but also in action. That people will know that we have been loved by God by how we treat one another. So it's a question of how are we showing, how are we reflecting the love of God in our own lives? Are we giving first love to other people? Are we loving them unprompted? Are we deciding, I'm going to do this thing for this person because that's what love is. That's how God loved me. So will I just pick up and do the dishes without being asked? Will I, will I do the laundry and, and mow the lawn? Will I do these things? Will I give the unasked hug? Will I go over to my neighbor and just check and see if he's got any projects going on? Because when we do these things, when we just decide and choose to love, decide to serve other people and put them ahead of ourselves... We're loving as God loved us. And people do see this. As, as one of our folks has been reminding me kind of repeatedly over the last few months, you might be the only Bible anyone ever reads. And because of that, it's not just action. But it's also words. I mean, that was a given, right? You're going to actually have to tell people about this love story. So what is that going to look like? Maybe you'll be so bold and you'll say, you know what, there's that group of missionaries that comes out here to Utah every summer, they're coming out in the middle of June, and I'm going to sign up with them. I'm going to sign up with Truth and Love Ministry because I want to go and I just want to share this love story with other people. And you know what, you go to random people's doors and they shut the door in your face, you're probably never going to see them again. It's kind of a little risky if you really think about it. But yeah, it's intimidating. It's intimidating to go up on somebody else's porch, knock on the door, and say, I got something I want to tell you. So maybe it would make more sense if it's with a relationship with somebody you know. Maybe it is just sharing it with your friends on Facebook, a Bible passage you just read. Maybe it is sitting around with other people, playing cards, playing board games, and you tell them about this sermon. It could come in so many different ways. And I'm going to give you one more. I guess it's one that I've, I've heard a number of times and I want you to think about. So often when somebody's missing in church and they'll come the next week, and they're, they're pretty much an every Sunday attender, and they'll say, well, you know, we had, we had friends come in to visit us, or we had family come out of town, so we didn't come to church. What if? 
when your friends and family came to visit, if you told them, you know what, Sunday mornings, I head over to this building because I need to hear about this love story. I need to hear about this God who loved me before I ever existed, a God who has done everything for me, and I'm going to be there. And I want you to hear that story too. What would it say to your family and friends if you were that bold enough to say, this is where I'm going to be because I need to hear this love story? Yeah, they might ignore you and sleep in. They might actually be upset that you're choosing not to spend time with them when they've traveled all this distance. But at the same time, they're going to see you actually love this person back who loved you so much. But this is not a person we just cast aside. But they are my life. My God is my life. I have nothing without him. And so I rejoice when I do see you bring your families and your friends when they're coming in from out of town and you brought them with you because you knew the love story that you hear every week is just as much for them as it is for you. And you get to share that with them. Our God has loved us first. It changes us and it makes us want to share that love story. As we share that story, we can remember, you know what? It's not up to me to make them believe. It's not up to me to convince them. That's God's work. I just get to tell the story. And when I tell the story, the Holy Spirit is working. And more people are getting to know the God who loved them first. They're getting to hear a God who has taken away all their sins. These people are being brought into that same fellowship with God that we ourselves enjoy, that same fellowship we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so sharing this first love, how God loved us first, is one more thing that goes to make our joy complete. So share God's love story of you and of all people. Amen. And the peace of